some 7 million years ago, human ancestors split from the apes that would go on to become our closest living relative, the chimpanzees. For the next 5 million years, our ancestors would have physically looked little different to modern chimpanzees, as well as in terms of behaviour and circumstances, as there was a very gradual process of evolution of physical abilities such as walking upright, in addition to still being good at climbing trees. Even as recently as 2 million years ago, some 3 million years into the age of what was called Australopithecines, they would not have looked different to modern chimpanzees, living a precariously frightened existence, constantly falling victim to predators, and where brains were of a comparable size to that of chimpanzees, or about one third of the cranial capacity of modern man. So when did the Australopithecines evolve into the genus Homo, that is all species of humans of the past two million years, of which the most successful in terms of global spread and longevity was Homo erectus that emerges in the fossil record around 1.8 million years ago and may have continued to exist up until as recently as 130,000 years ago, well, that change won't be found in the skeletons because skeletal changes would take many hundreds of thousands of years to propagate throughout the population. Instead, the real change from Australopithecus into the first Homo species could have taken place as long ago as 2.5 million years and may even have been just a eureka moment that occurred in a single individual, neurons in the brain forming new connections that literally would change everything. To have the idea to pick up a stone or bone and use it as a weapon that sparked the cognitive revolution as the human started to perceive the environment and all that it contains differently. Imagining what they could do with bones as weapons that would later be fashioned into tools, ideas that could easily be demonstrated and shared amongst the group and passed on to other groups through learned examples, all taking place in the brain. This quantum leap in thinking and passing on ideas took place in the brain, as physically at first they would have looked no different to those other Australopithecines which may not have been able to make the cognitive leap but which resulted in a complete change in terms of the nature of existence from that of being frightened prey animals which to virtually overnight becoming a deadly predator as the idea of using bones as weapons quickly propagated throughout the social groups and those individuals that were best adapted to killing would become the leaders, the elite of the groups and tended to be the most successful in terms of passing their genes on to future generations, thus triggering an arms race between groups for competitive survival and resources. So the ape that kills was born and things would never be the same again, as each generation would continue to perfect the skill of killing by using ever more sophisticated tools not just for f gaining food, but to kill other of their own kind, establishing a social hierarchy built on one's ability to kill that remains to this day as the cutting edge of technical technological advancement is most focused on those weapons that can kill the most humans. Today, despite recognizing that we are the greatest danger to humanity's survival, nevertheless, collectively, we are still unable to overcome 2 million years of evolution that has set us on the path towards extinction that we are literally now galloping towards that I fear nothing can avoid that which appears inevitable as our population and resources consumption explosion are causing huge stress on the planet resulting in what is the sixth mass extinction event of animal and plant species that is currently underway and manifesting accelerating climate change. The environmental impacts of which will sow the seeds for the use of weapons and mass destruction in future wars over resources. 
In fact, we may not even make it to the year 2200. The only true hope mankind has is for the product of our intelligence to give birth to artificial intelligences that will be capable of surviving a nuclear war by physically not being limited to this planet. Though unfortunately, we are likely to pass on our thirst for violence to the machine intelligence that will primarily have been created as a means for more efficiently waging war against other nations, i.e. an AI running better simulations of how to defeat the enemy, power which will soon evolve beyond our understanding and control, resulting in humanity fighting its last war against that which it created.